Good morning. How are you? My name is Mother Gail Trailer, and this is Just In Case. Just in case you have to go back to work today, the second day of December, a little while from now, maybe you're at work now, or maybe you're viewing me coming home. Just in case, you need to take a little time out to pray take a little time out to read the word because you know that you have a father in heaven oh my goodness that's what just in case is about once again I'm Mother Gail Trailer. it's 727 it's December 2nd would you believe that Monday and we have 29 days until the very end of the decade we're going to enter, by the grace of God, the year 2020. And I can tell you this, if you survive 2019, God has been with you. Didn't we have a lot of ups and downs, a lot of overs, outs, Lord, I can't make it, and this is the end. But God... But God, before I read the word to you and give you something uh, to chew on for your spiritual inner man, let's pray. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful new day. You are so faithful, and we are, we are grateful. We ask you to please forgive us for all unrighteousness. Create in us clean hearts. Renew a right spirit. Deliver us, Father God, from self. Please, Lord, help us to walk in your spirit today so we do not fulfill the lust of this flesh. Oh, God, give us strength over our weaknesses. Give us victory, Father God, over the enemy. Lord, help us to take the higher road to look to you because you have our hand. You are our strength. You are our help. And we need you, Lord. Protect our children as they go back to school, families as they go back home today. Lord, those who are traveling anywhere, please just cover us with your blood. We thank you, Father God, for all that you have done this week. For it was a glorious week. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Now, use us, Lord, today. Wherever we go, whomever we must deal with, Lord, use us to lift you up in this present darkness. Bind fear. Loose your peace and your joy and your mercy. Give us a hunger and a thirst continuously after your righteousness. These things we ask. And for your name's sake, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I had a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. I should say it was Thanksgiving weekend or Thanksgiving week. It was great. It was great. Had my family come in from the coast of North Carolina, the middle section of Texas, and the middle section of Florida. The north, the south, the east, and the west came together. And we enjoyed one another immensely. Sometimes in families, there's one of our family members or two of our family members that are not only not saved, but they refuse to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Oh, he was a good prophet. Oh, he was a good man. Oh, he's a fictitious character in the Bible. Oh, you hear all kinds of stories. Well, nonetheless, you know that our hope and our stay is in the Lord Jesus Christ. In this world where everything is whirling around, and tossing to and fro, we need our anchor to hold. Else you blow with the wind and our anchor holds in our faith in Jesus Christ. We believe we have tested and tried him, and we found that in him is life, its health, its strength, its marrow to our bones. It is our reason for living, and it gives us the upper hand in life. As I entertain family, uh, and, and we enjoyed one another. We danced. And we just you thought we were uh, some of Job's children. We enjoyed one another. But I don't care how much you enjoy and love. There are those who have a little spirit of sadness. And uh, they are not aware of the goodness of Jesus and will not accept the Lord Jesus as their Savior. And will not, um, maybe they had at one time, but life has gotten them in such a tizzy that uh, there's a, a sort of scale over their eyes. Well, we had a member in that uh, category and uh, I love that member so much and that member loves me however by the end of the uh, couple of days I found myself walking on eggshells and uh, most, most uncomfortable when the person was in the midst, most uncomfortable. Found myself um, apologizing for neighbors and friends, apologizing for the least little thing trying my best to uh, enjoy. However, Mother Gale, lost her loving mind. Yes, I did. Anger. My anger was so hot that it was white anger. It was, it was an anger that, uh, it was a, a seething white anger. No, it was, it was past blue, red, and you know, you see the yellow colors in the flames. My anger was white. It was, it could, uh, and it was, and it wasn't God's, you know, it wasn't a spirit of God. That person had transferred their spirit onto me, and I had, before I knew it, spoke with my mouth. And, uh, I 
I swore I would never, ever forgive. Never, ever, never, ever forgive. Never, you know, I was so angry at what she had said. She was angry at what I had said. And I said some things that were cruel. And she matched it up with saying things that were crueler. And uh, there was a parting of ways. I laid down and they went in their area of the house and I tried to sleep, rest after it, after the confrontation, but I couldn't. So I sat on the bed and I read the word. You want to know what I read? Let me tell you what I read. And no, Pastor Adams, I have not lost my mind. Okay. I read this. I mean, just opened up to it. And it spoke to me very clearly, very loudly. I found it. It's where I was. This this word came to me on sitting on that bed after that confrontation. In the first letter to the Corinthians, the 15th chapter, in the 33rd verse, it says, Do not be deceived. Bad company. Or do not, in the King James Version, it says, let's just do, let's say, let's do the New American Standard. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. And it goes on to say, let's see if I can get to it. First Corinthians, 15th chapter, 34th verse says, and this is what it's talking to me about. I mean, this is what God says. Do not be deceived, good, bad company, corrupt, good morals. And then it says, come back to your senses, your right senses, and stop your sinful ways. I declare to your shame that some of you do not know God. International Standard Version says, Come back to your senses as you should and stop sinning. For some of you, I say, this to your shame, do not fully know God. The person I was dealing with does not know God. We were eating we were drinking uh, and enjoying one another, and it was beautiful. We had said our prayers around the big table in the dining room, and uh, they had uh, children had gone out. Me and Gary stayed home, and I still had clothes to fold up, so I just folded clothes in the back. But by the time the person came home with the group, I just lost my loving mind. And I began to speak. I spoke with my tongue. I became angry. I became bitter. I became impatient. And I became 